Hi, welcome to Maya UV Mapping and Retopology 1 of 2. Now this is a two-parter, it's quite long, so maybe grab yourself a warm drink and um, yeah, sit back and just watch the magic unfold. So, here we go, we've got uh, the photogrammetrized um, magic mushroom, um, at least I think it is, it's just one of those iconic uh, Super Mario Alice in Wonderland-esque mushrooms. So what we're doing is we're bringing this across to um, Mudbox, and it's come across quite nicely. What we're going to do is we're going to retopologize this. Now there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, primary one is to get the poly count down and to make it into quads. So I guess quads first, poly count down second, and third, make it really easy to uh, create UV maps. So I guess the thing is that even if you have low res UV maps, they'll translate really nicely um, on sculptured UV maps, providing the sculpture base mesh essentially matches up relatively close. Um, and it's quite, uh, it'll make sense at a moment. But as you can see here, uh, retopologizing, just hitting the retopology tool in um, Mudbox, takes a few minutes. And, you know, we're just waiting here patiently. Uh, we've set it to about 3,000 polygons, which is nice for a medium, um, medium mesh, especially for something like a mushroom. If you're doing a close-up in the mushroom, 3,000 is actually not too bad at all. Um, just consider what shot, how far away you are from the camera. Um, as you can see here, it seems to have actually worked out quite well. It's captured all the detail that we want. And if we send that across, uh, export selection, retopo test, uh, we've done this a few times as you can see, so we've made sure it works. Um, now if we go into Maya, and you can see that's the super high res one at roughly 75,000 polys, which is a little bit too much for a mushroom. Actually, really, really too much for a mushroom. Um, and we get our retopologized one over the top, which is roughly 3,000. So several, several times less. Um, you can see that it actually matches up fairly nicely. Uh, you've lost a little bit of detail on the top, um, and that edge is a little bit softer, but that's nothing that we couldn't, you know, that we couldn't kind of make do with using um, various tools and texturing and whatnot. So uh, right now it's looking uh, pretty accurate, as you can see there. We might just uh, fix it up a little bit. You can see that dag there already. Um, just at the bottom of the middle section there, it's that mesh is looking a bit gnarly. Uh, we'll just chop that off. Uh, yeah, just grab a set of faces, delete them. Um, and then what we're going to do is just, yeah, do a little bit of surgery here. Uh, just, just a little bit of uh, cleaning up with the polys. And you can see it's really brought in some really funky geometry that's um, not going to play nice. Uh, especially that top one there, that's crazy. Um, so, yep, yeah, like I've said in previous lessons, got to fill a hole. Um, got to fill a hole tool. It's great. You're in a... So, we'll just uh, select the edge loop there, just double clicking, and then fill a hole. Now, you'll notice that this is an N-Gon, which is a multi, which has got too many too many uh, polys, it's not a quad, so we're just going to use the multi-cut tool to go between spots to cut it up and make sure that they're quads and it plays nice. And that looks actually pretty good. Um, let's just smooth it out, and actually really good, you can't tell the difference. A um, little bit of uh, plastic surgery there, love it. Alrighty, so now we've got that under control. This is where it gets a little bit difficult. We'll just get rid of this guy for the moment. As um, 
we're going to start doing some UV mapping. Now, I alluded to this in a previous class when we touched on it for about half, half an hour to an hour. Uh, we're going to go into a bit more detail. And I think, as I've said previously, we're, we're only worrying about that box um, because that's where we're going to put our textures. So remembering 1K is 1024 pixels squared, 2K is uh, 2048 pixels squared, and 4K is 4096 pixels squared. What we're doing here is we're just trying to get that um, stem as vertical as possible up that z-axis so we can wrap it in a cylindrical UV map. So here you go. Um, it's gone up and down and what we're going to do is we're going to select the vertical section and wrap it around with um, cylindrical view UV. So we'll select the face and we'll just select them as cleanly as possible. Try one more time. We really want to get a row um, of UVs at the top there and we're just hitting shift greater than sign or shift dot um to uh get a bigger selection that's a really handy tool Gr shift uh greater than or less than sign with faces makes it a lot easier now for some unknown reason whenever you hit the um uv wrapping tool with cylinder it always comes in on the wrong um axis just got to change that to rotate 90 on the x and that tends to fix it up and just change the scale so it roughly um, covers that area. It doesn't need to be too precise, just needs to roughly cover it and be on the right axis, which is um, rotating the X to the 90. So as you can see there, that's actually coming quite nicely and it's covered the entire square, which we'll fix up later, but we'll just bring that across for the moment. So first step, getting the um, stem done, really good. Now if we shift select, we will get the inverse of that selection. So we're gonna be selecting the entire of the um, top um, or the cap. Now the issue is, oh God, there's a uh, annoying little camera in the way. We'll just ignore it, pretend it's not there. Um, we can use the tool setting, this uh, the brush selection. If we hit unselect, then we can just unselect everything. Now we're constrained in the top view, so we can't see anything. Um, where I was going with that was, sorry, was that we need to break this up into two sections for the top and the bottom of this uh, mushroom. Um, if Remembering we don't want UVs overlapping because we'll only be able to paint one side um, and not the other, if that's the case, or you'll have both things on both sides. Remembering we've got a red top and like a yellowish bottom of the, the cap of the mushroom, that's not really acceptable for what we want. So all I'm doing here is using uh, the brush selection tool to unselect um, all the uh, UVs that I can see from the top perspective or the top view. And what you'll find here is that um, slowly but surely does it and just try and clean up as much as possible. Um, we're going to have to do a secondary um, selection after this, but this is pretty good for a first selection. It's nice and easy. Um, and it's a great tool to use and you just have to double click it to make sure you hit unselect. Now, as you can see here, it's, it's done a reasonably good job. It's a little bit patchy and we've left one or two... Um, one or two UVs or faces um, behind. That's not a problem. We can clean that up. So we're going to probably switch to a selection tool. Um, I believe is Q as a just a quick ref. Um, and what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get all of these faces around as a loop. Um, so we're just going to select them individually. And we're just going to try and get them, see here, um, just try some sort of logic where they can sort of follow a loop as best as we can. Now, granted, you can't get them perfect. Um, and I guess that's the whole thing about UVs is 
it's always an imperfect solution. Don't, you know, take the imperfect solution over the perfect solution. Um, as long as it does the job and it's fit for purpose, we're golden. Um, that's what I'd say. And we'll test this out later on. So if we've got any problems um, with overlap and whatnot. But right now, this is actually looking pretty good or good enough for what we need, which is great. Um, and it kind of matches the topography of the mushroom. Um, again, it doesn't need to be perfect as long as you don't have um, overlap with the UV selection. Uh, and we we can prove this as well uh, when we import this into substance later on. And that's, that's the big point of this is that um, you're much better off uh, doing iterative steps like this and trying to get it reasonably good than trying to get it perfect because trying to get UVs perfect, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of time that could be spent on other tasks, quite frankly. Um, get it good enough and work around it, it would be my suggestion, or modify it once you figure it out. Anyway, again, we've hit the planar, um, planar UV, and for whatever reason, oh no, it's worked. We don't have to uh, change the rotation, that's a, that's a first. As you can see here, it's actually come out reasonably well, and we'll just bring it out across to the side. So it tends just to fill up the entire square area. Um, unfortunately, we can't have that for a square for itself, but um, for the moment, it should be all right. And we've only got the last section to do. Um, which is the top section. So we'll just, we've selected everything that wasn't the last one and we've inadvertently selected the base as well. That's all right. We can just unselect that and uh, click off each one of these. So I guess a really critical point here is, oops, you just hit Control Z anytime you have a little whoopsie like that. Um, and this is the best way, in my humble opinion, of selecting UVs um, in May of 2017. There are newer tools in 2018 that might make this a lot easier. I've got a little bit old school here. Um, I will uh, have a link to some of the newer tools in May 2018 if you have access to that, but we're running uh, May 2017 as that's what um, is available to us and on the computers at the university. So here we go. We've got uh, the top selected, and again, it's just going to be selecting plain UVs. So uh, I might have mentioned this in class, but I'll mention it again. Planar, oh, hang on, this one's on the funny angle, is it? Yeah, we're going to have to rotate this. So just keep in mind, rotate zero, so it's nice and flat this time. So planar just means like a flat selection. Imagine if you're projecting onto that surface and then you took a photo of that projection. That's what it would look like. So as you can see here, um, it's coming quite nicely. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. Like uh, all said and done, uh, most of this is going to be pretty good um, right now. Just a couple of issues. So see, I guess, the pimply bit there that's mapped. What we're doing is we're just unfolding that and we're unfolding around the edges just because uh, there was a little bit of a concave section. So it was kind of curling up around itself. And again, with the um, any of the pimply bits where it's likely that they could have you could have cast a shadow, think of it like that with a projection map. So you just want to open them up a little bit and just using the unfold tool and like slowly but surely smudging it out. Kind of, um, I don't know what a good analogy is. So uh, just think of it like, I guess it's kind of rolled up um, and you're kind of just smoothing it, massaging it out to the edges and just uh, unfolding that UV map. And that's really all we're doing here. It's really, really subtle changes of this. I'd call this tweaks. I wouldn't call them, you know, this is where this is where the one percenters are at, really. Not even one percent. Um, 
So it's just a case of just going through this slowly but surely, massaging those UVs out. Uh, I Again, I wouldn't spend too much time here, but just so you're aware of the process, I thought it was pretty um, good to see. Taking it from retopology to um, taking it from retopology to um, UV mapping, it's good. And we'll bring the next one across. Keep in mind this is a two-parter, so it's going to be more of the same. And um, we're just going to bring that into the quadrant of the quadrant. So we want to uh, split this silver square into four sections and have each part of this in a different part of the square. So that's that's the top done um, and in the next tutorial we'll concentrate with the other two parts and finish off this UV map and test it.